How's it going, everyone? Alright, so... Here we are, we're back in another, uh, video. <laughs> I know I don't do too many commentaries nowadays, it's more of... Just recording gameplay and throwing it out there for you guys to watch, but, uh... I've mainly been, like, recording, like, some of these storylines and everything, because I've always wanted to have, like, a playthrough of certain games. That way I could just upload it and... If I wanted to go back and, like, refresh on the story of a game, I could just watch it instead of having to actually go play it, so... I mainly do it for myself, um, but that's not why we're here. <laughs> we're here to talk about that campaign for Modern Warfare 3. So, as of three days, um, about, yeah, about three total days since the early release of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, the common consensus is that it's not that good. <laughs> a lot of people are saying that the Modern Warfare 3 campaign is actually pretty weak and it's not a good contender. First, I'm going to start off with what my opinion is and then we're going to divulge into my thoughts and go throughout the video. It's not scripted. My bullet points are non-existent. I'm literally pacing back and forth in my room and talking to a microphone. So let's start here. What do I think of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, having played it from start to finish and taken longer than the projected four hours that people are completing it in? What I think of the campaign is that it is not the strongest Call of Duty campaign that there is. It's definitely not the best. There's definitely room for improvement. Yes, the open combat missions are not that great. Um, for a better term, they're probably just dog water. Uh, single player battle royale is the common term being dubbed for this. But in terms of story and the introduction of Makarov back into the series, how do I think they executed it? I would say that he's not as ruthless as it feels back in the original Modern Warfare series. And it's good they did not kill him off in this game. Okay. Now, I said that. I forgot to give a spoiler warning, but you're watching a video about my thoughts on the campaign. I have to go ahead and go into spoiler territory anyway. So if you haven't completed the campaign, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm joking. If you want to stay and watch, it's fine. But just want to let you know that uh, there is going to be spoilers ahead. So, we're starting now with the spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so like I said, it's a good thing they didn't kill Makarov in this game because even though, like I said, the common consensus of the story right now is that it is not that good, I could imagine the headlines had they killed Makarov in the same game they pretty much introduced him in. Now, technically he was introduced in the end of Modern Warfare 2 at the very end, but he was really truthfully introduced and you're able to see him talk, move, walk, and everything in this game. In Modern Warfare 3. So, where does that leave us? Basically, this is kind of like... I feel like this game, even though it's a full price game, and a lot of people joke around and saying it's a DLC for Modern Warfare 2, I would have to kind of get on the same boat with them and say that, yes, it is literally a DLC. Um, it doesn't help that the way they're releasing it on Steam, which is what I play on. I play on a PC and everything. It doesn't help that they literally release the game as a DLC on Steam. I will put a screenshot of that up there because I was telling my friend who plays on Xbox, I was like, Modern Warfare 3 is literally a DLC on Steam. <laughs> and it was really funny because it's like add-on content to Call of Duty HQ. And it doesn't help that they did it that way because it kind of solidifies that whole MW3 is a DLC to MW2, which it really does feel like it now but but if we go back in everything okay like I said so the open combat missions they suck nobody really likes them I had a little fun with them you know but one of the main things was my takeaway was just like I seen like a uh, somebody posted on reddit and they said they really hate the addition of the emotional support character and I didn't know what they meant by the headline until I read their post and then they started talking about how you drop into these open world combat missions and you're running around and everything and all these characters are talking into you and everything telling you like hey there's weapons in that container over there or, hey i've got your back i'm sniping i'm watching over you or, hey i can see you lt or something like that and i'm just like 
somehow they can always see me. They always know where I am and everything. But I'm by myself running around, sliding around and jumping and everything, trying to play single player battle royale. And somehow they have this perfect vantage point where they can just have eyes on me 24-7. It, it was like, give me some support <laughs> while I'm going to go to the cargo ship and everything to get this uh, this item that you need. Go to the go to the outpost over there and grab that. Why do I have to do all the work? You just get to sit up there and look pretty. Come on, come help. So yeah, that's the rant on the open open world combat missions. There, they're they're much to be desired. A lot of people do not like the addition of them. I'm not a big fan of it, but I will say that from what we get in terms of traditional Call of Duty missions, like the regular scripted characters are with you and there's an actual linear path through the mission those are pretty good they are giving somewhat of that traditional call of duty feeling one of the most notable ones that i kind of enjoyed was definitely the frozen tundra mission that one was really fun where you're going through you have Farah. she's like a sniper and everything you're you're rescuing a the prisoner which ends up being Shepard and everything. You start out underwater, you blow up the ice, all the all the uh, the heavy vehicles drop through the ice and you rescue the prisoner. Ends up being Shepard, y'all are going through the woods and all of a sudden snipers are starting to fire at you. And that's just, that, that whole mission, I was like, now this is what Call of Duty used to be. Now the only open world mission or open combat mission that I really enjoyed was the one with Gaz, where it's called, it's the mission called High Rise where you're uh, playing as Gaz and you're going through you're going through the uh, the uh, apartment building and everything trying to kidnap that one guy I forgot his name even though I just played the game I forgot his name but anyway it's Makarov's like lieutenant or something like that so you're going through this apartment building you're climbing the stories and everything and I tried to be as stealthy as possible you'll see that in my gameplay I really try to be stealthy but once they hear you they evidently know exactly where you are and at one point, I remember, uh, if you go back and watch the video, you'll actually see, I started getting flooded by these guys. Like, I'm just sitting in the corner, aiming at this hallway, and they just kept coming around the corner. I was like, pop, pop. I just kept popping them. Every time they came around, I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. I'm like, they need to stop coming. And then, and then, like, I broke off to the right, and I went in the little corridor, and they still thought I was right there. And I remember one guy ran right in front of me. I was like, what? So I followed him out of the room and went around and shot him from behind. But it was just like, it was a really fun mission because, you know, it was one of the few that you could actually be stealthy in because of like all the dark corners. Um, another one that I really enjoyed, it's kind of, it wasn't considered an open combat mission, but it was the mission Payload where you're in the, the big grassy field and everything and you're trying to take down everybody as price with like a, uh, like an MK-14. And that one was fun, you know, I was really trying to go for the collaterals in there. I never did get the achievement, even though I did get all five collaterals that you needed. I was kind of mad about that. But let's get to the penultimate point of the entire game. What makes this Call of Duty let you know that there is going to be another game? So, like I said, we've already done the spoiler alert, whatever, so if you're still watching, you obviously beat the game or you just don't care <laughs> so the point is is that at the last mission we go into that uh the train tunnel that goes underneath the river uh, up in london and you know makarov and all them they've taken it over and there's a bomb planted when you get to that point you're trying to help soap defuse the bomb and then makarov comes out of nowhere and straight up just like kick soap or something like that and then also or, or shoots him or something like that i know that soap gets shot in the leg but y'all go back to defusing the bomb after you clear it out. And then Makarov comes out of nowhere and like hits him with a gun or kicks him or something like that. And Makarov goes to point the gun at you. I think you're playing his price. And he goes to shoot you. Like he's holding the gun to you, about to shoot you, and Soap just comes up, tries to fight him and everything. Makarov pushes him down and basically gets Soap in a vulnerable position where he puts the gun up to his temple, pulls the trigger, and Soap is no more. Soap's dead. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh. Yeah. That just happened. I knew that somebody was going to die. I knew that th th this game, 
I knew that this 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 game was not going to finish out its campaign for this game specifically without one of the main characters dying because that is Makarov. Makarov is going to break through the plot armor and he is going to kill one of the main characters. And so Soap ended up catching a bullet to the head, which would be the second Modern Warfare game that Soap dies in. <laughs> oh man, I feel bad for Soap, but you know, if we keep with tradition and everything, we might end up seeing Ghost die in Modern Warfare 4, which would be sad, but, but it really sucked to see that, you know? Like, Soap got shot. He was actually one of my more favorite characters from the campaign. Like, Soap and Ghost are like my two favorite characters from the campaign. And seeing Soap get capped like that was not, uh, it was not on my bucket list or to-do list for the day. It was more of, let's beat this campaign. Let's get these uh, videos recorded. Let's get them uploaded. And again, I'm sorry for the video spam the past two days. I was just trying to get all that together and throw it up there because, uh, you know, but that leaves us again with the whole campaign. How do I feel after beating the whole thing? I will play devil's advocate. And yes, I know what the definition of that means. So I'm going to start off by saying, from a player's perspective, half the missions were not as good as they could be because of the open combat. The story did seem a little more co cobbled together and not as well thought out as the previous games but I will say that for what we got the story was not as bad as it could have been it could have been a lot worse I've seen and played games that have had worse stories but the fact that it's being charged as the full Call of Duty game again it's just a campaign right now uh you know I liked the campaign. I will say it. I liked it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. My experience could have been worse. You know? And <laughs> now, we're not going to put it on the same level of, you know, like cyberpunk or something like that. But yeah, so I mean, the story, not strong. Not as strong as it could have been, but my point is, is that I did genuinely enjoy the campaign. Is it as bad as people are giving it, um giving it crap for it. no no do I like because typically if you're left with a feeling of you've gotten ripped off after beating a game that could be a sign that it wasn't good me do I feel like I was ripped off after paying X amount of dollars for the game no I am satisfied with how the campaign went if anything it made me even more excited for the next game and here's why because the way they ended it off, Soap dies, Makarov lives. The next game is going to be based around World War III. Or the beginning of World War III. Makarov in this game was trying to get that started. He was trying to lay down the groundwork to turn Farah and Urzikstan into like a terrorist country to make, it, make the world see them as terrorists. So he was fabricating a lies of the world and we foiled him in almost all of his plots. But point is, he lived. At the end of this game, he lived. And being that he lived, the next game, he's going to have more tricks up his sleeve. He's going to have more, more, more scary terrorist activity stuff that he's going to do. I don't know what, what words I was looking for there. But the point is, it's just that in the next game... The story is going to be even darker. Things are going to be more grim. Things are going to be more serious. And I'm excited to see what happens. All I'm going to say is the only thing that I'm a little a little sad about is where the hell was Alejandro and Valeria? I know that, you know, this, this game was not based anywhere near Mexico. I don't care. They were such strong additions to Modern Warfare 2's campaign. All right. Here in Alejandro, go like, what the, what, what the hell did you say to me, pendejo? I mean, just, ugh. God, it, like, he was such a good actor for the game. Same with Valeria, like, oh my goodness, like, season three of MW2 was probably my favorite season of the entire game. 
just because it was centered around those two characters. So I know I really enjoyed season one and season two, or not season two, but season three. But like I said, season three was like, oh, it was perfect. I loved it. But that was my main takeaway. Like I noticed when I finished the campaign, I said, hey, wait a minute, where the hell is Alejandro and Valeria? Where are they at? I need El Sonombre. You know, we need back our, some of our good characters. Bring them back into the fold. But I'm like, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give them some slack on this one. But uh, if, if Modern Warfare 4 does not have Alejandro and Valeria in it, that, I will be refunding that game. <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, I actually enjoyed the campaign. I don't feel like I was ripped off. Uh, did I get what I expected? I mean, you know. I feel like expectations should be set low nowadays. It sucks that it has to be that way, but games never deliver what they are supposed to. I mean, I got off the Destiny boat uh, several months ago, close to a year ago now, and I jumped off right before Lightfall came out and actually refunded that. And that was where I had a bad feeling, <laughs> like Lightfall's not gonna be good, and the future of Destiny is dark. And it was. If I would have kept Lightfall, I would have felt ripped off. But so far, Call of Duty, I feel like it's made a full comeback for me. And I'm really enjoying what they're putting out nowadays. Like I said, the campaign could have been better, but it was it was decent. It was decent, pretty good. I enjoyed it. I spent my time with it, and I had fun. But that's it. I had fun. That's all there was to it. That's what video games are for. I had fun. I enjoyed the storyline and I had a good time. So, I wouldn't give it a rating. I'm not going to say it's amazing. Was it better than Modern Warfare 2 and the uh, Modern Warfare 2019? No, indeed. No. Multiplayer, though, from what I've seen in the beta, if they fix the spawns, which probably will never happen, but if the spawns at least get somewhat better, then the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer on November 10th will be. Peak Call of Duty. I will say that much. Because I really enjoyed the beta for Modern Warfare 3 and I really felt like the gunplay was amazing. So I'm really looking forward to the multiplayer coming out. But overall, this, this video is just for the campaign of Modern Warfare 3. So again, I had fun. I enjoyed it. And I don't feel ripped off. But the entire community does not feel the same. Which is fine. People have their opinions. We all do. That's what makes us human. But at the end of the day, it's all up to you whether or not you enjoy it or not. Me, like I said, I enjoyed it. But the open combat missions are still bad. So, there you go. That's my feelings and my opinions on the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. I would love to hear what you guys think about it. If you even played it, if you even care about it. I'm, I know most of you here are not for Call of Duty. Y'all are more for the Bethesda games and everything. Fallout 4 and Starfield. So, that's that. But uh, again, if you enjoy the video enjoyed hearing me talk for 20 minutes uh you know go ahead and drop a like down below you know subscribe for more put your comments down there it's with how the algorithm works nowadays but it's all good just uh you know comment subscribe if you want to I'm not forcing you but yeah i'll see you guys later peace out